Whether you like it or not, over time your PC is going to get some dust buildup and get a bit dirty. And this may cause your PC to operate inefficiently due to your cooling being affected. And I don't mean to scare you, but in the worst case scenario, it may stop it working altogether. So that's why today we're going to give you our top tips to cleaning out your PC. Some of the tools you'll need, what to do and what not to do. All right, let's get going and learn how to get your pride and joy all sparkly and new again. The first tool you're going to need is air. For most people, this will mean some compressed air in a can because it's very cheap and easily accessible. But you could also use a compressor on low settings with a water trap installed. But remember, always keep your can of air vertical. If you don't, you'll have something that ends up looking like this. And since we don't want any moisture in our computer, this makes blowing with your mouth a big no-no as well. For a basic clean, this can of air will see you through. But if you're looking to get a bit more hardcore with cleaning your PC, you're going to need some other tools. You'll want a dust cloth for wiping off and cleaning bigger parts, and for smaller and sensitive areas, you'll want a non-static brush. You'll want a screwdriver to help you disassemble your PC so you can take out the components and get into those hard to reach places, and you'll want some isopropyl alcohol or the appropriate cleaner if you're going to be reapplying the thermal paste on your CPU. One thing you should definitely keep in mind is that you should never clean your PC using a vacuum cleaner. They generate heaps of static electricity, which could easily mean permadeath for one or more of your expensive PC components. On that note, you also build up static electricity within your body. So to make sure you don't fry any components and to be super safe, use an anti-static wristband. Put that strap around your wrist and then attach the other side to a metal part on your case so you're sufficiently grounded. Firstly, let's unplug the computer and give it some time for that electricity to leave the system. If you want to be extra sure that there is no electricity stored in any of the components, make sure to press the power button on your computer to flush it all out. Start by removing both side panels on your case as it will allow the dust to escape more easily from the other side. Now to get started, let's just take your can of compressed air and use it on the surface of your components inside the case. Make sure you don't blow the compressed air too close to the components as this might damage them. There is a lot of pressure coming out of that can. Make sure that when you're removing the dust from the fans that you stop them from spinning. If the fans are spinning in uncontrolled circumstances like this, they might be damaged and their lifespan may be decreased. Also, if you're letting that fan spin freely, all you're really doing is blowing around a dusty fan. It's always best to spray in short bursts as well. If you're using air from a can for more than a couple of seconds, it will become super cold and that area might experience extreme temperature variations. That's not something that we really want. At this point, most of the loose dust is probably gone, but your components might not be as clean as you want them. For some people, this is going to be clean enough, but if you're looking for a deeper clean, let's grab that screwdriver and start removing components so we can get into those hard to reach places. Let's start with the CPU. No matter what type of cooling you are using for your CPU, everything starts with the radiator. Start by using the compressed air to remove as much of the loose dust as possible. But remember, if you're cleaning any fans, don't let them spin. And if you want to get into any of those hard to reach areas, you can always use that brush. Since you've taken the cooler off the CPU, you'll want to apply some new thermal paste. Before doing this, clean off any of the old degraded thermal paste using isopropyl alcohol or a dedicated thermal paste remover. Make sure that you're using a clean cloth as well, so you leave behind as little material as possible, such as a microfiber cloth. To be safe, wait for five minutes for that alcohol to evaporate before adding the new thermal paste. Apply that rice grain size of thermal paste right in the middle of the CPU and carefully put your cooler back on. All right, let's move on to the graphics card. This is cleaned in basically the same way as the cooler from your CPU. Grab your compressed air canister and blow some air into the heat sinks and around the fans while you hold those fans in place. All graphics cards look a little bit different, but you'll want to make your best judgment about using a brush or a dust cloth to clean the back of your graphics card. Make sure you're super gentle and don't damage anything and use a brush or dust cloth to remove that dust, especially from the fan blades. To clean the motherboard, all you'll need is a brush and some air. Make sure that when you're blowing air on the motherboard that you keep a safe distance. You can also use your brush to get rid of all the dust that's accumulated in the unused slots on your motherboard, as well as on top of your RAM. Storage devices are super easy to clean because they don't use internal airflow to stay cool. The only thing you'll need to do with these is brush off the external dust with your brush or cloth. With every component in your case clean and dust free, you're ready to put everything back together again. Also, if you're interested in more PC guides, we have a complete build guide covering all of the main components you'll need to put together your own PC.
All right, I know it can be a little bit daunting pulling off the side panels of your PC, but if you follow our tips, you'll be able to get your PC all sparkly and new again and running the way that it should be. And if you want any more things to be covered in upcoming PC for beginners videos, anything you need us to demystify, let us know in the comments below and we'll hook that up for an upcoming piece of content. All right, we'll see you all again real soon. Bye.